My name is Christo Morris, and I'm the Executive Director of the Powder Basin Watershed Council. Today, I'm going to be taking you on a virtual tour of one of the watersheds where we work, which is the Powder River Watershed. The first thing I want to do is make sure that everyone understands what I mean when I'm talking about a watershed. The definition I like to use for a watershed is an area of land that's drained by a common waterway. In this case, we're talking about the Powder River, which originates on the backside of the Elkhorn Mountains here, uh, flows south and then east through Baker City, and then north through North Powder, and then, uh, and then heads east towards the Snake River. Overall, it drains uh, over a million acres uh, and drains most of Baker County and a portion of uh, uh, the southern part of Union County. One of the first things uh, that I should point out about this watershed, uh, it's a lot drier than what most people think of when they think of Oregon. Because as storms come off the Pacific Ocean uh, from the west and come east inland into Oregon, they're pushed up over the Cascade Range. And as air rises in elevation, it cools. And as it cools, it holds less moisture. So those Pacific storms, as they come off the ocean, drop most of their moisture in the Cascade Range and leave the eastern two-thirds of Oregon fairly dry. Just like uh, the rain shadow effect caused by the Cascades, most of the precipitation in, the, uh, in Baker County falls high in, the, uh, high in the mountains as snow. And so the snowpack that accumulates in those mountains, uh, you can think of that as basically like a big, a big uh, water tank, a big storage tank for water. And as that, uh, as that snow melts, that's the water supply for, uh, for the watershed for the rest of the year. Spring temperatures warm up and snow starts to melt. Uh, water starts running downhill again and uh, collects into small streams. And those streams converge into larger creeks and eventually uh, flow into the Powder River as tributaries. And uh, we have what's known as spring runoff, which is when, uh, uh, when the rivers and creeks and streams are the highest. And uh, one thing to point out is that under natural conditions, uh, most uh, rivers and streams would actually overtop their banks either every year or every other year. And so, uh, so flooding is actually quite common and it's actually a good thing uh, if it's in the right place because any water that, that comes out of the stream channel, out, or out of the river channel, up onto the banks, soaks into the ground and uh, recharges groundwater and is stored there uh, and eventually released later in the season. We usually think of, of flooding as a bad thing, but it can actually be very beneficial uh, for the watershed. So as water moves down through the watershed, uh, it, it supports a, a whole variety of wildlife. Of course, all animals need water at some point during their life, uh, but some, uh, some wildlife species uh, have specific requirements for water. For example, some birds of, of prey require large open bodies of water. Uh, some animals require uh, clean running streams and rivers. And uh, of course, the most famous uh, aquatic animal is the beaver. You can see a, a beaver lodge behind me here. And uh, now historically, uh, beaver would have been much more widespread throughout the, the Powder River watershed. Um, but uh, they were extensively trapped in the 1800s and uh, removed from many places. Um, the, one of the unique things about beaver is that they are fanatics about uh, slowing water down and, and, and uh, trying to stop it from flowing away. And so their dam building activities actually uh, help store water within the watershed. Human activity can also affect watersheds. With dams, there are trade-offs. The, the most obvious one is, of course, the ability for fish to swim up and down stream. Um, the other one can be problems with water temperature. Because uh, reservoirs uh, expose so much water to, sun to sunlight, uh, water temperatures can heat up. And uh, so that can be one problem associated with dams. So in addition to numerous high mountain lakes, 
There are also four major reservoirs in the uh, Powder River watershed, and these reservoirs provide uh, irrigation water for crops grown in the Baker Valley uh, and Keating and other agricultural areas. They provide opportunities for recreation, such as fishing and boating, and, uh, uh, and they also provide flow for the rivers downstream of the of the reservoirs during the uh, during the dry summer months so many benefits to the watershed uh, from from these reservoirs so this area we're in right now are the sumter uh, dredge tailings roads uh, train tracks uh, forestry management um, uh, cities uh, um, agriculture and, uh, and, and of course, historic mining practices, as you, as you can see here, can have a significant impact on the watershed. Um, uh, all of these activities can affect things like water quantity, uh, water quality, how clean the water is, the timing of when water flows, uh, which can really be important. Um, and then, of course, uh, how fast the water is flowing. And that's important because the faster water flows, uh, the more erosive uh, force it has. This used to be a flat, wet meadow, and through the course of, of dredge mining it, um, then uh, it was left, as you can see, uh, just as piles of gravel and rock uh, with, uh, with some ponds in between. It, it does support quite a bit of wildlife, so even though it's not in its natural condition, um, it does support, uh, it does have benefits for wildlife. So as I mentioned earlier, flooding can actually be beneficial for a watershed because it allows water to, to, to overtop out of the channel and spread, spread out across, uh, across the land and soak into the ground. And so one of the big impacts from the, uh, the dredge mining that occurred here at Sumter is that the piles of gravel on the side of the river don't allow uh, the river to overtop its banks during high flow. And so that means that all of the spring runoff that historically would have spread out across this meadow, all of that spring runoff is, is constrained within the channel and flows downstream. So uh, there's potentially a big loss of, of water storage because of that inability to flood and soak into the ground. Some of you may recognize where we are now. This is the Leo Adler Memorial Parkway in downtown Baker City. And uh, uh, this is about a two mile stretch of walkway that follows the Powder River. And uh, it's a great way for people to access the river and uh, uh, go fishing in the river. Some people even inner tube down the river. Um, it just in general, it adds a lot of character to, to Baker City. and and a lot of places where people can, can enjoy the river and, and, uh, and just hang out. The Powder River even has a section designated as wild and scenic, which means that uh, recreation is prioritized there and, and development is limited. And it's located below Thief Valley Reservoir down to the uh, Highway 203 bridge. So as you've seen so far today, as water uh, makes its way down through the watershed, starting high in the mountains and, and uh, coming down into the valleys, uh, through town, through farmland, through forests. Uh, it passes through lots of different environments, lots of different properties, and, uh, and there's many different ways that, uh, that these components can, can sort of affect the, uh, the water as it, as it flows downstream. The role of the Powder Basin Watershed Council is to help facilitate uh, maintenance and restoration of the rivers, streams, and lakes uh, in their watersheds. And so what we try to do is uh, coordinate efforts to maintain the watershed in a way that uh, the community is getting what it wants from the watershed. And so that's really the first step, is uh, trying to figure out what the community wants to get out of its watershed, what it's interested in. Maybe they're interested in, uh, in fishing. Maybe some people in the community are concerned about flooding. Others might be concerned about water supply or water quality. And so uh, one of the tasks of the Watershed Council is to 
uh, is to really get a good understanding of what the community wants out of its rivers, lakes, and streams. And so once we have that figured out, uh, the next challenge is to uh, try to coordinate management uh, to meet those goals that have been identified. And uh, as you can imagine, working with so many different property owners, uh, agencies, um, and interests can be a real challenge. And so uh, that's really the work of the Watershed Council, is trying to make sure that all people in the community are getting what they, what they need and what they want out of the watershed. Finally, as we come to the end of our tour, one last thing to consider is that eventually water leaves the watershed, which means, uh, and in the case of the, uh, of the Powder River, it flows into the Snake River. Uh, it's used to generate electricity on the dams in the Snake River. Uh, it flows into the Columbia River, where it provides uh, migratory habitat for salmon, and then eventually flows out to uh, the Pacific Ocean. And so it's important to remember that the things we do in our watershed can potentially affect uh, users and communities and wildlife downstream. So with that, uh, I'd like to say thank you for joining us and remember to enjoy your watershed. <laughs>